Hello, my name is Chris Mancuso, uh, and I'm going to be talking about GenePlexus, which is a web server and Python package uh, for gene discovery uh, using network-based machine learning. Um, and I'm a postdoc at Michigan State University. So why computational gene classification? Um, so according to NCBI, a file you know, we pulled a while ago, you know, there's roughly 20, 1,000, 30,000 protein coding genes, 17,000 uh, non-coding RNAs. Um, so there's a lot of these genes, um, important parts of the genome. There's also thousands of diseases, processes, and traits. So how do we link genes to all these different diseases, processes, and traits? Experimentally is the only really way to do it, but we need computational tools to kind of guide what to do next. Um, for instance, only 12,703 genes have at any experimental, experimental annotation to a term and go. That means there's thousands of genes that don't have a single annotation in the go. In the go, um, in go. So um, this is a big problem. Um, so there's large scale competition, uh, competitions uh, such as CAFA. Um, so the community, you know, takes this pretty serious about how to be able to computationally predict uh, the function and role of genes. Um, one way of doing this is network-based gene classification. So you can like leverage the power in these like, huge networks that have been aggregated over a number of years. Um, these networks vary in the way they were constructed. Some of them contain only physical interactions like uh, BioGrid or the consensus uh, path DB. Um, some integrate lots of different information, like um, physical inter interaction, text mining, genome annotation, um, barring information from other species and so on. Uh, String does this very well. Um, and then also it, there's other ones that integrate data from thousands and thousands of omics experiments, uh, like the giant tissue specific networks. Um, yep, and so again, they can also be context specific. So giant is a suite of networks that are specific to a given tissue. Um, there's a handful of networks that do uh, networks for a whole bunch of different species like BioGrid, String, and Imp. Um, and some are disease specific like HumanNet and DisNet. Um, yeah, so what is, so the method that our web server is based on, the network-based method is we call it GenePlexus. So you can say, represent a network as an adjacency matrix where um, any element in this matrix the, is, is the weight between gene M and gene N. And it's a gene by gene matrix. So what we can do is what we want to do is just train a simple linear binary classification. So if you put in, um, and so what we do is every gene is an example, as well as the network connections for those for that gene are the model features. So for instance, if you're going to predict on one gene um, here, you could have, you know, the network connection here being zero means it doesn't have an edge between it and a network connection having one means it has a connection. These can also be weighted. And then you put enough positive and negative samples in here and you can learn these beta coefficients. So for example, if you look at uh, PCD, um, the disease PCD, uh, what you can do is in the thing over here to the left, you know, like the blue nodes are known nodes, yellow nodes are unknown. And then we can also add in negative genes. Um, and then we can train a model and then we can predict every gene in the whole entire network, how associated it is to those positive genes, uh, to that positive class. Um, again, so this is a, another sample disease that you can do. Um, and so you can, you know, the LZTFL1 gene predicts maybe really high here, but one of these other genes that are kind of add on its own, maybe not predicted that high because it's not as connected to the other genes. So it's kind of the, uh, the, the basic function of this. It's sort of like social, social media predictions. A lot of times, you know, they predict, you look at someone's social network and then you see what their friends are doing. And then you kind of can use that information to predict maybe what uh, an unknown label for a given person in that social network. So we have extensively benchmarked this method. So we've tried it on a whole bunch of different networks, a bunch of classification tags like function, disease, and traits, a bunch of validation schemes, a bunch of evaluation metrics. And we benchmarked it against label propagation, LP. So label propagation is kind of maybe, maybe like the most widely used and kind of like, especially in web servers, um, way of doing network-based gene classification. Um, and it's kind of a very similarly related to a concept called guilt by association. 
Um, and so what we've done is we benchmarked this and we showed that, it, that supervised learning pretty much always outperforms uh, label propagation. Um, and another way that you can do this, uh, not only just using the adjacency matrix or like our diffused influence matrix, so you can also take each node and embed them in a lower dimensional uh, space, uh, the embedding matrix, and we use node to vec. Um, and it's interesting that we've compared our method of using like kind of node to vec embeddings to other deep learning models like graph convolutional nets and graph sage. And what we find is that our, the model is much better than these deep learning models. And that's because in the network like this, when you have like where you're training for a specific gene set, that there's not that many, there's not, the labels aren't that high. So it's like these deep learning models are really data hungry and there's just not really enough data here. So this is kind of like the sweet spot of like, it's more complex than label propagation, but it's not too data hungry, like a deep learning model. So it seems like this supervised learning linear model is like really fitting the bill for this task very well. Uh, if you want to see more about uh, any of this network kind of gene plexus, how do you make it context specific? Uh, Remy Liu is an incredible grad student, um, and he will be talking. He has a talk about this um, at some point um, during this conference. So, um, so this is like, what is the software? So the software walkthrough here is, you know, there's some inputs, you make some selections, a job is submitted, and then you get some results. And we'll walk through these, um, we'll walk through these steps as they come. But a first couple questions about the, the software. So what type of research will it benefit? And it's really any project that you want to gain network informed insights and you have a gene set of interest you want to do this for. Um, so it's really kind of task agnostic. If you have a gene set of interest, we think you can learn, gain some insights by using our method. Um, which type of researcher will benefit? Any really now, um, regardless of your programming skills or really how much you even know about networks. Um, it's the, the user interface is really, um, it's really, I think, well, easy to use. It's well documented. There's lots of tool tips. Um, and can it really be used to aid research? You know, we extensively benchmark this. There's a whole paper benchmarking this uh, method. So we think, yes, you know, it, sh it should be useful to most everyone. So we think it is model, cons we know we can make this specific to the context a biological, you know, that a given researcher cares about. Um, so we have a handful of networks that are pre-processed on the web server and the Python package, uh, but also in the Python package, you can supply your own custom no network right now. We're working on that for the web server. So is the model trustworthy? So we also, if you supply enough genes, if the user supplies enough genes then we can do cross validation. So you can also get kind of a, a little bit of a feeling about how well the model has actually performed on your gene set. Um, and then is the model and results understandable? And yes, so we try to provide some kind of special interpretability of the model. And we do this by comparing it to other trained models on known, that were trained using known gene sets. Uh, plus we give visualization of the connectivity of the network um, with the tops of the top squared genes. So what is the difference between the web server and the Python package? So the web server, it's available via browser. You don't need any programming. It's really, you know, it's easy to use. It's like searchable, sortable, downloadable. Uh, the visualization is done by D3. Um, it's cloud architecture. So it's, uh, you don't have to run anything on a local computer. Uh, the, Py the Python package is you run it on your local machine, but if you have a, a computational resources, like a, you know, a computing cluster, you can scale. If you want to do a whole bunch of gene sets at once, um, you can do this very easily. Um, and so that's, that's the big thing is that like you can do uh, this over and over again. We don't supply that on the web server quite yet because it is, you know, costs some money to run it. So we don't want to have people running too many jobs right now in the cloud. Um, and then the Python package allows you to add your own data and gene set collections. And it also, you can just run it with one command, a command on the command line interface. So you know, almost need to know very, very little Python. Okay, so the walkthrough. So what is the first thing? The first thing that a user is going to do is a user is going to input a set of genes. So they're going to either upload a file or copy and paste. Can be in a few different formats, ensemble, um, it could be an NCBI entres or gene symbols. After that, they are all the gene IDs are converted to entres because that's what all our pre processed networks and gene set collections are in. Um, so you pre process it, and then you can kind of see uh, the next thing that shows up is a 
um, kind of like which network was that gene, was that gene able to be converted to NTRES and it was it in the network and you can kind of maybe see, you know, is there a certain network that had more coverage, um, more overlap with your gene set than others, so you might want to choose that. Um, so then you kind of get a little information about your gene set. Now the next thing is the user has to make some selections. So the first thing they need to select is which network they want. So these kind of vary in size, coverage, and construction. Um, we talked a little bit about them uh, in the previous slide. So then the features are how the network connections are represented. So you can either use the direct connections. Um, you can take those connections and then kind of diffuse that information um, over the whole entire network a little bit based on random walk with restart, and that's what the influence matrix is. Or you can use a, uh, an, an embedding technique called node to vec to take each node and then represent it as a low dimensional uh, vector. And then the model needs negative gene selection. So we can do this by, you can either say that you want um, genes to be considered negative based on other based on a set of disease gene sets or based on a collection of biological process gene sets. Um, so you can have a little bit of choice which of how to select the negatives. Some things to note here is that we provide some guidance about which parameter selection might work the best, and there's numerous tool tips available for this. Um, the pre-processing of the network is in the gene set collections and the negatives are kind of like a lot of what this web server brings to the table. These are, it's very kind of difficult to get all of this going in one step. The, the models is kind of like a line in scikit-learn, but the pre-processing and trying to bring all of this data together in one spot is uh, kind of like, I, I think the beauty of this web server in the Python package. So, um, and again, the Python package, you can supply your own network um, and gene set collection. Um, Yep. Okay, so now kind of implementing the model. So the step one is a user connects with the user interface. Um, and so this is for the web server. A user connects to the user interface as you upload your genes, select some parameters to run. And so this is all on a re low resource web app on the cloud. So once you select it, a high resource computational hardware is kicked up and then it's allocated for to run this job automatically and then it pulls the needed data out of storage um, and then so it can use that um, and then the model is trained and so what we want to highlight here is that a model is trained some of these models have 20 something thousand features um, you know thousands of positive you know, negative thousands of positive and negative genes so it's pretty it's you know it's it's not a huge like deep learning model but it's it's it takes a you know sometimes 10 12 gigabytes of ram to run so it's not it's not nothing it trains fairly fast uh, you know 5 to 10 minutes but but what we want to do is it, what I want to highlight is that a model is trained based on the user inset uh, input. Now it's not just inference. A lot of models will ju they'll just train a model with a lot of things, and then a user will just put some things in there, and I'll just have to use the pre-trained model. So here we're allowing a, a user to train this kind of custom model on their exact genes that they care about. So then after that, after the model is trained, the results are written back to storage then they're passed back to the web app and then the user can access them via the browser. Um, and so the, another beauty of this is since it's on the cloud, you just click the submit button and then a new um, computational hardware is just allocated. So this kind of scales very well. So you can just go, if this was a traditional web server, you know, since these take you know, 12 gigabytes maybe to run one model, if you say you got you know, four or five on there, you're up to hundred, you know, it runs out of memory pretty quickly. But here this really can scale quite quite well. Um, and there's also a huge uh, kind of team effort here. There's uh, people who do biomedical research, web developers, cloud architects, all kind of came together to get this project going. So uh, the Python package, what's a little bit different? Uh, instead of the user interface in a browser, you use the command line or Python scripting. You can use a job manager to kind of send jobs out to the local compute cluster. All the storage needs to be local. Um, and the data, you have to download it from Zenodo um, and, and get it to your local storage or supply your own data. Okay, here, a quick thing about the results. So you can retrieve, um, so when the model, the model will return as a probability of how associated every gene in the network is to the user-defined set of genes. Um, there's also links 
about inf extra information on the genes and um, you know, if, was it known? Was it a positive? Was it unused? Was it a negative gene? Um, and that's um, yep. so that's uh, that's, so it's uh, for every gene. It's a prediction for every gene in the network. Um, so there's uh, interpretability we have through some network visualization. So it's interactive. You can slide the edge weights, the no counts, the gene probabilities. Um, then informative, as you cover over the genes, you get a lot of extra information about like what exact probability was, its class, its gene type. It's you can click the thing and get, go to the NCBI page for the gene. Um, so then also interpretability is what we do is you train the model and you can get a set of coefficients. Then we've also for that exact negative gene selection, the exact network representation, the exact network, for all those parameters, we trained a model using those parameters on thousands of known diseases, thousands of known biological processes. And we, tr we can find out how similar the user trained model is to given biological processes and diseases. And so that's kind of what we return here. And we note that this is distinct from gene set enrichment, which is what all, typically all other softwares reside. You just get a list of genes from these network-based predictors, and then you stick them in gene set enrichment. Here, we're trying to kind of give a network informed, like why did the models, these are, these are the models that had similar features that were important in the model deciding between the positive and negative class. Um, so some future improvements are that we would um, kind of improve the reproducibility. So we run a stream a stream on the GitHub repo, probably maybe create a package for having a web server part separate from the actual code base. Um, like to add user accounts, so you can have private, public results. You can save important gene sets and models and popular things could get easily searchable. Uh, and real popular gene sets, maybe we can aggregate predictions across many different uh, models and get better predictions for a given gene set. Uh, we'd also like to do incorporate non-human species. So you, you can either upload a set of genes that aren't human, then it gets converted into human and we can put them in our networks. We would like to add non-human networks to uh, the web server in the future as well. Also, we're working on a project where we jointly model human and model, human and model species together. So I have a poster on this. So if people would like to talk to me at my poster or uh, after the conference about this, I'd be happy to talk about the cross species modeling as well. Okay, so uh, to sum this up is that we, uh, the task is kind of allow a user to predict genes similar to a given set and then do that in an interpretable, an interpretable way. Um, so we have a web server and a Python package, and we think all the software is pretty well documented. It's all open source. It's all licensed under the Creative Commons 4.0 international license. Um, so the team is, the Krishnan lab is run by Arjun Krishnan, who's a, he's a great, great uh, advisor. So he's uh, moving to Colorado. So if people are interested in you know, grad school or postdoc, I you know, couldn't recommend him more. Um, and so we have a really great team here. Um, Remy uh, was really um, very, he's amazing. He's just an amazing researcher, especially with all this network-based stuff. Um, and Kayla really helped a lot with the cross-species stuff. So this, um, this is it. If you wanna to go to this little QR code thing, it'll go to all our resources that we have for these kind of projects. Um, and thank you. And I look forward to seeing everyone at the conference.